Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Feeling slightly groggy with my good friends, Jose Neuer, Ryan Boniface. How are you doing, guys? Good, thank you, Lee. Good, thanks, Lee. For those watching on YouTube, Joe doing a good bit of subtle merch there with his Inspiration Nation mug in front of the camera. That's what I like to see. It's got, good it's stuff, got lots Joe. of liquid in it. Yeah, Good going. We thank everyone out there for supporting the show. Um, wherever you are listening or watching, leave us a review, hit the subscribe button, tell friends and family. All that stuff helps us grow massively. Um, follow us on social media at listen to IN, listen to O I N. And of course, Joe is everywhere. Just search for Jose Neuer in Google, in particular on TikTok, J Neuer underscore inspiration nation. And you can watch us recording live as a number of people are doing right now. And we appreciate you all for it. Lovely. Looks like George is joining. So, hello. Hey, George, how you doing? Not seeing you for a while. How are you getting on? Hey, guys, some regulars. It's great. That's what we like to see. Um, annoyingly, this week, when I'm not feeling great, it is my week for conversation this week. But don't worry, guys, I do have a topic. And this is a bit inspired by you, actually, Joe. Oh, so you God. you sent us a video in the week. Oh, yeah. Of someone that we've had on the show a couple of times now, Mr. Mark Drager. Great guy. Um, great couple of interviews in the archive. People go and look for them. Just search for Mark Drager. You'll find it there. And it was about what was kind of where I started this year with my whole resolution, if you like, on being less judgmental on myself and other people. And the video you sent, wasn't it? It was Mark Drager talking about the, you know, success. Successful yeah, it was the big people. secret, wasn't it? It was the big secret for success. That was what that's it was. That's it. And he was talking about that. And I and really obviously spoke to me, Joe, because that's what I've been looking at this year. So it's you know, his view was that the most successful people, people he's interviewed, people he's spoken to at conferences, people in his own network, um, that that lack of judgment, it wasn't something they necessarily articulated to him, but it was something he observed in people was a, a key to success in decision making. Um, driving things forward not wasting energy loads of great stuff on there i'm not just going to repeat his video but as you know what this is something i've been looking into this year um, and i found it really useful myself and first is not judging myself not worrying about that judgment freeing me up for making you know making decisions faster because i'm not worrying about that but the, the key to not judging myself was consciously not judging other people you know not thinking a negative when someone does something, giving the benefit of doubt, presuming there's a good reason behind it, not worrying what someone thought of a conversation or not doing that analysis myself. I found it really liberating this year. I spoke about it loads of times on the podcast. So I just wanted to dive a bit deeper on that. So I've done a bit of looking after you sent that video, Joe, and I found an article on Psychology Today that actually lists, it gives 10 reasons, if not 10 benefits, for not judging people. So I thought we could we could look through them. I'll put a link to the article as well um, in the show notes. Barbara Markaway, PhD, is the author of this. So again, I'll put, put a link to the article. But I just think it's good for a bit of a deeper dive on that non-judgment stuff. And like we do with these, I'll read I'll read them out. We can give our quick views on it. And I I will hopefully see where these have resonated with me during the year when I've done this as well. So let's go. 10 reasons to stop judging people. Number one, so how can we become less judgmental? Number one, don't blame yourself. And what it says here is we instinct, we're instinct, we instinctively hardwired for survival. When we see a dog or a person that might bite us, of course, we feel threatened. We go into fight, fight or flight mode. We get tight. We get defences. It's this normal reaction. And the key is to pause, take a step and avoid that mode. So when there is a risk, when you feel like there's a problem, when something might have gone wrong, don't blame yourself is number one. Thoughts on that? Ryan, do you want to go first? Uh, I suppose it's easy to blame yourself doing that. So I suppose that's a good one to start with because I think, what if I'd done this differently or that differently? Would it have had this outcome? You know, if it's something that's quite blatantly not your fault, then I think it's quite easy to not blame yourself. But if you have any kind of implication, then I think it's very easy to fall on a sword that perhaps wasn't meant for you. I think you go straight into defence mode then, don't you? And I think you yeah. can waste so much energy and time in that space. Yeah, agreed. Um, so number one is not blame yourself. Number two, be mindful. And it's got although, although judgment is a natural instinct, try and catch yourself before you speak or send that nasty email or do any potential harm. And it says here, it says you can't get your words back. So pause, take a step back, catch yourself before you go into that judgmental phase. And I think I probably spoke about this a few weeks ago where I did this, where I, someone said something that did set me off, and I, I typed out a 
more emotive response, shall we say. And, and I left, I deliberately left it on my screen and didn't send it. And as the day went on, I chipped away at it and I took out the emotive stuff and I left the factual stuff in there and actually came up not only what was a really good factual response, but a response that elicited a really positive response back as well. So that was kind of me catching myself on that and trying to be mindful not presuming bad instincts in the response that's come through again given that benefit of the doubt and again that's that's been my big thing this year is trying to just build that trigger in my head that when you do slip into that judgment mode so to not do that thoughts on that guys that being mindful about the response that's something i need to to be more mindful of is that it's because i think we can all talk about it but it's actually doing it isn't it and taking a step back i am very thought about the responses what i tend to think of is the style of the person i'm communicating with and doing it that way and then tailoring the message but i think a good step back especially if you're feeling emotional it's so important. I do need to practice that more. So yeah, I really like that one. I really do. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Number three, and this this is this is one I think is a really strong one. Uh, number three is depersonalize, and it says here when someone disagrees with us or somehow makes our life difficult, remember that it's typically not about us. It's about them. Um, and their own pain, their own struggle. And it's got a quote here, in fact, from Will Smith, where it says, um, because in all honesty, everyone is struggling. Some people are better at hiding it than others. And I think it's so easy when you do have a conflict that you go straight into what, you know, why are they doing this to me? Why are they attacking me? Why are they making my life difficult, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that bit, and it's something I've been telling myself is normally it's got nothing to do with you. Their Their decision, their action is all focused around their mindset and their activity you, your feelings are almost a byproduct of their feelings in this situation but it's so easy again to to trigger that judgmental and defensive response and i think once you once you take the personalization about it once you realize that it's not actually about you again it's another step in getting rid of that wasted energy and getting to a solution and dealing with things yeah that's a really powerful one for me that one is i think yeah definitely i agree with that ryan you got anything on that one not, not more than what Lee said, but I think uh, I fully agree with what Lee, Lee kind of pointed out. So just quickly for me is that I think what I've said to Lee and Ryan, I want to sort of like for me, when I do my, my subjects, I want to try and focus it more on how we can use this for mental health issues. And I think this is a big one for that is that, you know, everybody's got mental health. Like, everyone has mental health, right? Everyone has to maintain mental health like your body. So I think this one's a really big one because everyone's got got shit going on. And I think we have to be mindful of that. And I think you're right. We project their pain on others. And I think we just got to be mindful of that. And we've got our own pain. And sometimes that can trigger us. And Eckhart Tolle's talked about a pain body. And when someone gets triggered, they then try and trigger you. So you're both entering into this whole emotional back, uh, you know, back and forth, which then escalates. And then, like you say, it goes back to your first one about being mindful of what you say. So, you know, you'll, you'll say things in the moment when you didn't really mean them, but you can't take them back. And then people, oh, do you remember when you said that? And he, it, again, it, comes, it, really, it really, really does destroy relationships. So it's really good that, though. And like, yeah, thanks for that. Make sure you take the box as well. He What's swore. That? He swore. Oh, he's just this passionate Joe. Do you remember? I remember when he wouldn't dare utter a swear word. He couldn't even spell it. <laughs> yeah, it's because of you two. You influenced me. That's what it is. Positive influence, Joe. Positive be passionate be passionate number four look for basic goodness it says this one really takes practice as our minds naturally scan for the negative negative is that word as i fight through my cold to to uh, enunciate but if we try we can almost always find something good about another person so again it's fighting those natural and again a lot of this goes against our natural living in the wild survival instincts, but it is that looking for the good. Again, just fo- focusing and training your mind on the positive rather than negative. Yeah, 100%. This, this, is, this is where we we got to do the training because this is the bit where, you know, we get like the response to the email, but we've got to think about, okay, so what's going on for them? You know, what what is good? What is this good about? Actually, I've sent Lee, I've sent actually to a few people, I've sent um, a thing called the Stoic Rules of Life or something. I can't remember what it was, but it's really good. And it does, and, and, and this, this, I mean, the stuff that people go on about, talk about self development, personal development, mental health, all this stuff goes back to places, it goes back thousands of years. We're all staying on the, soldier, on the, on the shoulders of giants, um, like Seneca and all this, and, and Marcus Aurelius, and, and they talk about this stuff all the time. So, you know, looking for the good in, in people is so important. And I think we can appreciate something. If they give you some feedback and you really like your back's gone up, actually try and think about, you know, what, what can you take from that? And what, what's what's the reason for it? Is there anything in there? So, yeah, I absolutely believe that. Look for the good is really important. 
So yeah, it's a really good one. Thanks, Lee. Um, number five is, <laughs> it says, repeat the mantra, just like me. So remember that we're more alike than different. And the person here who's wrote this, they've said, when I feel critical of someone, I try and remind myself that the other person loves their family just like I do and wants to be happy and free of suffering just like I do. Um, and most importantly, that person makes mistakes just like I do. So actually look for the commonality of people, not just, you know, not just the things that can be confrontational and abrasive. Um, and again, where you might feel sensitive or defensive or passionate on the subject, they might feel exactly that same way for different reasons. And again, that's where that conflict comes in. But it comes back to that earlier one that it's not about you, it's about them and what could be driving them to do it. Yeah, just like me, I think is um, a really good one. And generally, and, and I think it goes back to one of my own beliefs and I'm going to, that, that people are generally good. There are people that, there are a very small minority that aren't good, but generally people are good. And when stuff comes up, like you say, everyone's just trying to do their best and, and get through life, right? And that goes through mental health, people not in a good space, whatever it might be, I think we've got to be compassionate, you know? And as I say, I think what you're going back to your first thing, Lee, about when you wrote that email and you're trying to go back and you're trying to take out all the emotional, emotive stuff out of it. I think that's so important because that's come from a place of pain. And uh, I think when it comes, when, when they're like reacting to something, Again, going back to the stoicism thing, you know, go back and, you know, go from a place of not judgmental, you know, going for a place of kindness and looking for the good, I think can only produce something great. And you say you've got a good response. So, yeah, I totally agree with this one. This is good, by the way. I love this. Number six, reframe. So when someone does something you don't like, perhaps think of it as if they're trying to solve a problem in a different way than you would, or maybe they have a different timetable than you. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's a way of, of to help you be more open minded and accepting their behavior um and i think this back to that email that i talked about i think this this is where you can this is what i did during the day i tried to think of what are they trying to achieve rather than why are they trying to upend me and it did it did take me a day to get there like i've said but i definitely think there is that look you know what if if they're if they are trying to do a good job if they are trying to do a good thing if they are trying to be a good person you know whatever the situation is then what's the positive reason they're doing what they're doing and trying to, you know, just see it as a counter to what you're doing, which is that, like you said, in, in reframing. Yeah. And uh, for me, it comes from that intention bit. You know, usually people want to go, I think, Lee, you've coined this one. And Ryan, I think you've coined it because I think, you you know, you've worked together closely. People come to work to do a good job, don't they? Usually, usually people want to do their best, right? So, or whether it is in any place, we'll, we'll try and do our best. So, it's always that intention. People will try and do things with an intention that's usually, I just want to do good. And if they are, then, you know, we've got to try and be aware of that and actually try and respond to that and try and fire that up to say, okay. And actually sometimes being, you know, that open-minded piece around, actually we may have done something that wasn't quite right. <laughs> and actually being open and going, do you know, I'm taking accountability for that. You know, it could be that. It could be that. It could be that they just shine the mirror at you and go, Oh, okay. And sometimes that's the most painful ones to really sort of take a step back. Oh, do you know what? That wasn't right. And actually having the humility to go, do you know what? You are actually right. Let me just see what, and then see what I can do. So yeah, I really like that. And it's got a quote on this one from Refane from the Dalai Lama. It says, people take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they're not on your road doesn't mean that they've gotten lost. And I like that because there are different paths. And you led us in nicely there, Joe, to number seven. Number seven saying, look at your own behavior. And it's, it says sometimes we may be judging someone for something that we do ourselves or have done. And for example, the next time you find yourself yelling at someone while you're driving, ask yourself, have I ever driven poorly? And it says, of course, we all have. And I think there's there's a couple of layers to that. One is that, you know, the driving example that we've all made a mistake or done something wrong or, you know, whatever it is on the road. But actually, sometimes have we made mistakes that we've learned from in the past and then actually... Is there a risk that you're less tolerant of other people than going through the steps and making those same mistakes that you've already made yourself? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Ryan, but you, anything on that one? No, I, th I think I've completely forgotten what the point, what 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 was that one? That was look at your own behaviour. So are you judging someone for something That's you it, might yeah. have done yourself? That was it, yeah. So I think I think it's very easy to kind of go, that person's a donut for, for doing that. But six months ago, you were making the same mistakes and you've only just learned how to perhaps not make that mistake or to be aware of that mistake and kind of move around it. And I think, you know, it's important to remember one of the earlier ones, which was just like me, right? Because you could still make, you could still make that mistake. And just because it affects you from the other way around doesn't mean that you're perfect. And it's just important to 
to just kind of be real to yourself about what the expectations are of those around you. If you're not perfect, then they can't be. Yeah, too right. And I think that perfectionism thing is a real dangerous thing, isn't it? You know, if we, we try and do that, stuff. actually, Mark was talking about that. Mark was talking about perfectionism in another video, is, but that's another thing. Um, but looking at your own behavior, I've t interpreted this one as sometimes you see other, like, since doing this whole thing, I see behaviors in others that reflect, that actually trigger me because it's like me. Like sometimes when I've seen people and there's seen people that I've seen that have been really enthusiastic and sometimes I think, God, it's just too much enthusiasm, but that actually is a reflection of me. And I recognize that I go, oh, I'm not really liking that, but that's actually a reflection of yourself. And so when I found that, I think, oh, hang on, they're very similar to me, but they're, they're starting to annoy me. And I think that whole thing about being really reflective about seeing things, actually seeing yourself in the mirror. So oh, oh, how does that, if I'm feeling annoyed now, and when I'm doing this, how do other people feel? And I think that's a real sort of 360 thing that I'm really becoming more aware of, definitely um, in the latter part of this year. So thank you for that, Leah. I think that behavior thing is really, really important. That actually you, you see yourself in others. And I think sometimes that can trigger you because there's sometimes there are things that you don't necessarily you know, like about yourself and they come forward and that triggers you. So it's really strange, but I, I really like that. Thanks, Lee. I will say, Joe, I can definitely see why you talking to someone like you would be a situation you find quite annoying i can relate to that one quite strongly could you imagine yeah, two joes in one room i don't think i could deal with it i couldn't I think deal I, with I it i wind these guys up too much i clearly wind these ride and lee up far too much you know, not wind them up they actually really annoy them <laughs> but i go right 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 then I, I post an inspiration as you chat what about this video what about that video what about all this and they go oh my god what's jose doing right now shut up number <laughs> eight educate yourself yeah so when people do things that are annoying, ironically, as we were just talking, <laughs> it, you know, it might be they've got a hidden disability. And it, it gives a couple of examples here on, you know, social skills or not aware of personal space, you know, linked to things like Asperger's syndrome. Um, you know, there might be reasons you, you find things abrasive, annoying about people that actually they're not even aware of. Again, it's that they're not doing it to you to be annoying. It might be something that, that's not even on their radar um it's again it's the, it's the not about you thinking you know are you in a shop and someone's just completely cut you up with their trolley as you're walking through but then what's going on with that person's life have they just had some really bad news are they struggling financially have they got loads of work worries on their minds all, all those things that mean they're not even aware of what they just did they're just on a bad day when you don't happen to be and give that you know, why not assume that is the case and not judge that person and actually go out of your way to not make them feel bad about it um, which again is is completely against those human nature fight or flight things, but that's part. That's a big part. And actually, I will say that behaviours in a shop is one of those things I use as a training method for myself on this whole non judgmental thing. Were you saying that actually last night I went to see Avatar and was in, you know, when you're in a rush and you go to pictures and you're in a rush. And I was at the tour at Nando's and usually I go, oh, look, they say, no, who's next, whatever. And actually I was there, but, you know, I usually say, oh, we'll let someone else go next. And then I just jumped in and said, I'm next, you know, like, and I thought, and I went back and I thought, oh, I really should have let them go first. Because it's almost like that feeling of, and that's that, in, in my life, what was going on is that I needed to get out of there. But that person yeah. not necessarily realised it, but I could always, almost sense that, hang on, what, you know, whether I'm judging myself, you know, going back to the judgment thing or whether they did think that, who knows, we'll never know. But I felt bad because of it. And I thought, oh, I should have done that. I should have let them, let them go in before me. So you got, again, this, is, this is where the training comes in, Joe, because don't presume they did judge you. Yeah. They yeah. didn't care. So that, this is where yeah. you've got to be non, you don't That's presume it. the judgment and then you don't put out the judgment. So, and I've yeah. had a few situations like this where there are things where I would have threaded over an interaction where actually I'm like, no, I'm sure it's good. And it's, it's tough to do, but it does get you to a very, very good place. Also, yeah. If you go into the pictures, was it 1926 or something? Oh, sorry. Nice. The movies. Well oh, nice. sorry. Is that mannequinism? Oh, the, the, the cinema. I went to the that flicks. One? I went to the I went, flicks last night. I went to the talkies. It wasn't one of those with the guy at the front on the piano. You could hear the words and everything. Oh, is Ryan having a Christmas drink there? What you got? I've got a beer. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to tell you something. I'd love to have joined you there, Ryan. I love that. Educate myself. As I'm <laughs> sick, no, Lee, I'm just on water at the moment. Yeah, I'm just on tea. He's got my tea. I can't, I can't show you. But... Lee does that when he, he does that when he's at the pub as well. Oh, <coughs> I can't buy this round. <laughs> <laughs> does he do that? Let's no, educate ourselves in, in around fairness, Lee then. In fairness, he, does, he hasn't ever done that. Oh, bless him. I can imagine Lee's pretty generous. Number nine, and again, this is where the, we've, we've referenced this a few times, so it's already in our minds. Number nine is give the person the benefit of the doubt. 
and it's got the wording on here and this is similar to something we said on Psalms as well it says someone once told me no one wakes up in the morning and says I think I'm going to be a jerk today most of us do the best we can with resources at hand and what's going on in the moment and that is the thought people don't set out to be arseholes so what what is the reason is it you know stresses they've got going on time pressures are they overtired have they got you know is it something you know asperger's autism that sort of thing where they're not even aware of whatever all these sorts of reasons that can be why you are taking again a personal affront to the way someone's acting that's got absolutely nothing to do with you and again this is a non-judgmental thing if we don't back to your nando's example joe if you're not worrying about that judgment and not judging other people and the person next to you is not judging and isn't worried about the judgment and the next and, and we all do it so much animosity disappears from all these presumed issues that we've all we've all got between ourselves and that's a stoicism mindset i know i'm going about stoicism a lot because actually ryan holiday who i was listening to in the video that i sent to you says that if you're ever doing think anything in the world imagine that everybody's doing it and, and then think about the effects of that so there's, there's no positive or negative. Neg the, the, the positive is don't, don't judge. And if everyone didn't judge, exactly what you said. If people judge, exactly imagine, imagine that world where everybody does judge. So I love this, by the way. Um, and also the other thing was about the no doubt about probably about three or four years ago, I had someone going falling asleep in 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 um, mine and my colleague's training session, and we thought, God, how rude! And we was like, you know, we was thinking. But actually behind this, and, and this is when you know we had to really start a dialing that we must be going something more going on than someone just falling asleep. And also they, they suffered with, with a condition, but immediately when you saw it, you know, they go at a late night, why aren't they prepared? All that stuff starts going on in your mind. And I think this is a really, really big one to give them benefit. And we did like a good few days, but we even had to get pe people involved to say, well, you know, is there anything more? It had to be really a sensitive conversation around it, but we all first, we, we, almost like first reaction was what is going on, you know? So yeah, a really good one, Lee. Thank you for that. And number 10, feel good about you. And I give an example here from someone they quote, uh, Breen Brown and they say you know they're quite if I feel good about my parenting I've got no interest in judging other people's choices if I feel good about my body I don't go around making fun of other people's weight or appearance and it says here we're all hard on each other because we're using each other as a la launching pad um, out of your own perceived deficiencies and I think that is good I think the happy you are about you know yourself your appearance where you are in life what your approach is to things, et cetera, et cetera. And the more comfortable you are about you and what you're doing and how you do things, the less you are looking at what other people do. And again, it's an outward, inward thing. If you're happy about it and you're confident in what you're doing, you're not worried about what other people think. And then the flip side of it is you're not then pushing that out onto other people. But I think the more, the more, I suppose, insecure you are with yourself, that then gets projected out the other way as well. And it's again, you know, these these aren't easy things. These are constant things you need to be thinking about. But the more you can feel comfortable with what you're doing and just push ahead to doing something because you think it's the right thing to do, again, it pushes you to that that non-judgmental pace. And again, just talking through that, I can just imagine all the the wasted energy in that worrying about judgment and judging that you can, you know, you can get rid of if you work on this. I love that, by the way, because the other thing is that this is reminding me of a stoicism quite again. They all come back to me. Now you're doing this, it's really reminding me of stoicism and the link between that mental health and the psychology of it is be strict with yourself, but consider it with others. I love that. So be strict with yourself and consider. So like for me, like you know, I want to have this routine. I want to do these things, but actually, I want to I want to follow through on the promises that I make to myself to make me feel good about what I do and the things that I do. Right. So if I make myself a promise to say, hey, I'm going to eat healthier this week or whatever, and I do it, I feel good about myself. But I'm not here. You know, if someone's if I see someone eating junk food and that, you know, and, and they come to me, say, oh, I'm eating a lot of junk food. It's like for me to be considerate of that person and not project that on other people because it's about me, not about them, and actually being considerate towards them um, and actually, you know, allowing people to go on their own path. And I think this whole thing about feeling good about yourself is for for me. And this is my own personal perspective. That I this is why I do all this personal development stuff is that because of mental health and the issues I've had, the year I've had my mum. I do want to have a routine where I'm trying to get better. I am okay with myself. I feel good about who I am, but I just want to get that one percent better. So then I can feel good. So when I go out there and say what you say about feel good about you, I can feel good about myself, and that means be more compassionate towards others. And that's something I'm still working on around the judgment thing, like you said, because I still obviously have it because I've told you about it. But I think all this slots like a jigsaw into everything else that we've talked about. Um, so, yeah, again, nice one, Lee. I like that. Thank you. As someone, Ryan, Ryan, who's known for being confident about themselves, how do you feel on that one? I have got no idea what you're trying to say about me. That's an outrageous <laughs> accusation. 
best staying in the podcast. I'm just <laughs> I'm just aware of my own abilities. Yeah, I'm joking. Well, I'm joking. this is this is what it's saying. I mean, it's saying feel good about you. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. No, there. It, it, I two or three years ago, I would have agreed with the second part of what you said. Now, not so much. I I think you can you can be aware of how good you are, but not everybody else in the world has to be aware of how good you are. Like you can just you can let true. The, That's the proof. It. You can it let the proof. Thing. You can yeah. let the proof of what you do do all of the talking for you in my more recent history the more people that go on about how good they are the worse they actually are (laughs) very true yeah i think i think it's just really it's really easy and i think this topic's a pretty good one to kind of this will come out after the new year but to round off your yearly of not being judgmental i think this is a really good topic to have kind of touched on so it kind of looks full circle as to kind of just not being judgmental and not being deprecating of others based off of what you think they've said about you or perhaps what your interaction with them has led them to believe or or anything like that and i think it's i think it's just a really positive way to look at life and and just kind of you know giving people the benefit of the doubt we've all worked you know lower media and senior leadership roles we've all had to have conversations with people about how they're feeling people that report to us or we've had to talk about how we feel to the people that we report to and what's going on with us and any struggles we're having and any issues that we've got or any issues that they have depending on who you're talking to and you know it's it, we would if somebody in our team that we knew was having problems gave us a bit of lip we'd probably let it fly but we wouldn't necessarily let it fly from a from a stranger and it's really easy to to kind of get lost without the context i yeah. think con- context is king for me absolutely yeah, definitely i've got a question actually ryan i think i want to fire this one at you from i know we've got only about a couple of minutes left so maybe it's a quick 60 second response to this one ryan um it says what advice do you have for the younger generation i mean you coming from the younger generation i thought it might be nice for the younger generation to comment what there is not think? there's not much in my generation that was as is in even Lee's generation, and Lee's only 10 years older than me, maybe a bit, maybe a bit more than that, I'm probably being a bit generous, but and, and things have changed so much. Like, I remember walking around with a Walkman on my phone at school, and now if your phone doesn't have a music player on, you're the problem. So it's it, the world has changed so much, and it will continue to change. The next 50 years will be the biggest shift the human history has ever had in terms of a hundred year swing. And I think it's my advice to the, for the younger generation, I'm not sure if I fit in that anymore, is to not bother thinking about what would my parents have done. Your parents would have had a house for 30 grand at our age or my age. I couldn't even get a deposit for 30 grand right now. So it's just it's just yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't compare too much. Definitely comparison to the V for Joy, one of Ryan's classics actually. Absolutely. And again that was in the stoicism video that I said through as well. I thought rule 15, I think it was. But yeah, no, it's got that. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to keep going and say, don't judge yourself. So a final thought to finish off, finish us off on here. And it's got, it says, finally, remember that judging a person does not define who they are. It defines who you are. And I think Ooh. that works the opposite way as well. well. You know, one of the key things, first of all, if you're trying to stop worrying about judgment coming in, is other people's thoughts about you do not define you. And if they, you know, just because someone thinks something about you, that only has any power if you give it any power. So don't just, yeah. it doesn't matter. Block it out of your mind. And that's both ways. You can't influence someone else through your judgment and the same vice versa. So again, it's wasted energy. It's only if you allow it, isn't it? It's only if you like take, take it. If you only take it on board, yeah, absolutely. And I have so, had a couple of those. And on like the you socials. said, Ryan, this has been a bit of a bookend for me. For and this isn't that you know, this isn't like oh, I'm now really good at non-judgmental. What am I going to do next year? This is something I'm going to continue with at the forefront of my mind to keep working on. I have genuinely myself practiced and this found it really, really beneficial. And I'm going to keep pushing it through as I go forward. Right, we were on a tight countdown here on our clock, yep. so I'm going to say social media at listen to IN, listen to OIN, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. If you like what you're hearing, leave us a review, hit subscribe, hit that five star button. It all helps us with the algorithms, tell friends and family. We appreciate you all out there. And for the final time in 2022, I will count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. They should. Catch you guys Catch later. You guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here. 
because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free and also don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell then you're going to know when another videos go live and don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out i really really appreciate it and lastly don't forget out to check the newsletter the link is in the description below that's where i can talk directly to you without through the youtube throughout the social because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with inspiration nation ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next so i'd love to see you in the next video so please click on those links please follow through please let's get this community building i appreciate you so until next time I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.